never thought, you know, at any point during my growing up that I would end up in a mental institution. My whole life has led to this moment. Like, how disappointing. I always um, thought of Christians as like these really emphatic people who wanted me to basically just turn away from anything that was fun. <laughs> if we're bad, we get punished by God because, you know, he's good, so you can't stand bad. I had this distant, arbitrary view of God. I went to a Christian college. You go to chapel three times a week and, you know, you dress up every day and you're really smart and you get all A's and you work hard and everybody likes you and you're doing all the right things and you have this bright future. So I kind of just thought, I'm going to believe in God in my head, but I'm just going to do my own thing. The minute I'm out of my house and I have the opportunity to go to this party and, you know, drink at 18, I'm like, oh yeah, like I've never done that. That'll be fun. Like I'm going to try some new things. I kind of felt edgy because I was like breaking the law and I was breaking the rules there. But I just had fun with it. And then a long pattern of that, you know, thinking that I could just keep doing it and it would never catch up to me when I was 19 and I was a sophomore in college. Like I was taking, you know, a shot of tequila like at 8 a.m. on a Monday morning. It became a little bit too consistent. And I never really thought about the term alcoholism. I didn't really think about the term depression. Like that was not the thing that I was thinking of. I was just thinking, oh, this is something I gotta do to get to the day. And then on the outside, you know, I'm posting pictures of my friends like, I'm so happy and I'm smiling. I could almost feel myself, like my health, my mental health, my physical health deteriorating. So as a teenager, I had heard about self-harm, like from my friends and stuff. And I thought like when I was 17, you know, maybe I'll just try it one time. And you know, the minute I saw like the blood, it was like, it, it's hooked. It was like this dopamine hit. And in a really twisted way, I'd almost reward myself with self-harming. I looked down at my arms, my legs, and I realized like, that's actually not real. Like I actually don't like who I am at all. As the alcoholism progressed, the urge to self-harm got so much stronger. And I felt too like, even if God loves me, he's not going to want to associate with me too much because look at where I've ended up. So when I go home for Christmas break after fall semester, all these feelings just started coming out and I couldn't control them. And I remember my parents asked me like for the first time, they said, are you depressed? And I told them no. I go back spring semester and I couldn't keep it all in, you know, it just, it had started to unravel inside of me. But this thought kept occurring to me, it was just death, you know, death, like I could just end this, I don't have to do this. It's just very strong and I'm thinking about it all the time. And I remember one night, I decided I just have to try, at least have to try one time. And so I remember taking the razor, slitting my wrist and um, nothing happened so I just kept going and I just kept going and finally I'm surrounded by blood but I'm not bleeding out and um I realized like I don't think this is gonna work I, I'd broken my razors like there was nothing left for me to use my friend kind of came in and she sort of put an end to what I was trying to do and I think that that was the first time I really cried <laughs> in a long time so, you know, when you try to do something like that, you can't just go back to normal life. Um, I had to be institutionalized for a week after that. And I remember I just cried and I cried and I thought I have never, ever been this low. This is where I've ended up. My whole life has led to this moment. Like how disappointing, you know, when you're 19 years old and you want your whole future to be like gleaming. And at 19, you're realizing, oh my gosh, like I don't really have much going for me. I sort of let go of like my stubbornness because I realized, you know, my plan actually wasn't better than God's plan. Like even if God's plan wasn't that good, it had to be better than this because this is really not good. And I remember waking up the next day and I went into like the room where all the patients kind of hang out and there was a group of nursing students there. And like, lo and behold, this guy kind of comes out of the blue and he sits down next to me. He said immediately to me, like, I feel like God wants me to talk to you. And I thought, okay, is this guy crazy? I'm not sure, you know? And he said, um, 
you know, I can feel your pain. Like I can feel like what's coming off of you. And I want you to know God loves you and he hasn't left you. And he told me to read my Bible every day, which was so weird because that was something I used to do when I was like a teenager. So he told me, you know, start in Psalms, like start in the book of Psalms, go through Psalms. And when you're done, go through the gospels, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I remember feeling like, you know, if he can say that, you know, that means something good's going to come out of my life. And I don't know what that is, but I know that it, it's better than this. And so what he gave me that day was just a lot of hope. This vision of myself, like getting out of there and maybe doing something good with my life, it gave me a reason to try to get better. It gave me a reason to stop drinking. Like finally, I had the possibility of something better. And so when I went back to school for junior year, I finally made a point, like, I'm just going to read one chapter every day, like he told me. The first day, obviously, nothing changed too much. The second day, nothing changed too much. But over time, I saw things in my life kind of started coming together, and my eyes started being open to a lot of things. Yeah, I was still self-harming. That was still something I struggled with. Um, depression was still something I struggled with. And those things did not go away immediately. But over time, you know, I felt like, oh, I'm being led to the right doctor. And, you know, this medication is probably going to help me. Over that first semester, I don't really know when it stopped. I don't know when, like, the last time I cut was. But I remember looking down kind of at the end of the year and realizing I haven't cut in a really long time. And I don't even see any scars on my arms anymore, which was incredible to me because I was told that they would never go away. And now I'm looking down at my skin and like, there's nothing there. I came to this realization that like my faith is not something that I go to when I'm feeling strong. It's when I'm feeling weak and it's when I'm feeling vulnerable and it's when I'm feeling like I can't do it anymore. And um, it's just me constantly admitting like my desperation for Jesus because I have nothing else to rely on. I still just read like one chapter every day. I never got... <laughs> fancier than that. It's the first thing I do when I get up because if I don't do that, like, I don't know who I am. I think what I want people to know is sometimes I think you get to the point where you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, I can't do this anymore. And I think that that's where God desires to come in. The only thing that can really fix your brokenness is Jesus.